from lockups and slowdowns to deleted files and crashes. We are all familiar with computer bugs, but 2017 brought us a number of software snafus with some serious consequences. Harry McCracken is technology editor for Fast Company, and he recently wrote an article detailing the year's major bugs. Hi, Harry. So one of the biggest bugs of the year seems to have been the Equifax hack that exposed the information of some 140 million Americans in September. What caused this massive data breach, and is it true that it was easily avoidable? It was completely avoidable because whoever um, stole those identities did so by leveraging a vulnerability in Equifax's server software, and a fix had been released for that two months before any of this happened. So if Equifax had been on top of its software updates, there wouldn't have been a problem. And now, just over a month later, in October, researchers discovered a major flaw in the Wi-Fi encryption system used by almost every device that connects to the Internet. What happened there? Well, since 2004, we've thought that Wi-Fi was really secure because of a standard called WPA2, which encrypts everything. And it turns out that it's possible to, to uh, override that security and uh, a bad guy could get in the middle and intervene in between you and the servers you connect to. And that affects almost every device that uses Wi-Fi. It's not quite as alarming as it sounds, just because if you're doing something like sending your password to your bank, your bank will encrypt that anyway. Um, so it's not like stuff was unencrypted, but it was as pervasive as a bug can get. Right. Now, most of these issues have to do with digital security, which is, of course, a serious concern. But November's train crash in Singapore shows us that some of these bugs actually put people in physical danger. Can you tell us more about that incident? Yeah, there, in Singapore, there was one train, and it was standing still in a train station. And another train came behind it and struck it from behind, uh, injuring quite a few people. Fortunately, nobody was killed. And it turned out that the signaling software that was supposed to be aware there was a train in front of the one in back failed. If it had worked properly, the, the second train would have stopped in time, but it didn't. And it was all due to a software bug. And similarly, a, a problem with Amazon's key service, that, that's a service that allows its employees to access customers' homes in an attempt to stamp out this porch piracy that's a, a big problem. But it turns out that this was exploitable. Did anything come of that? Well, fortunately, this is one of those things that was theoretical and caught before it became a problem. But Amazon's key system uses a smart door lock and a camera to let people to in, people uh, but have them be Let's monitorable. And it turned out that a bad guy could essentially freeze the camera. So you would think that nobody was there and they could go into your house anyway. And um, security researchers demonstrated this vulnerability and Amazon patched it quickly. But it's a reminder that the more we use software to, in theory, keep ourselves safe, the more important it is that that software be reliable and, and not have vulnerabilities because for sure the, the bad guys of the internet will be looking for ways they can exploit any problems. Absolutely. And many of these bugs saw fixes from the companies responsible, as you mentioned. But in some cases, the damage had already been done. And there, have there been any legal repercussions for these companies in those instances? Well, Equifax is going to be dealing with uh, class action lawsuits for years, especially since almost 150 million out people out there are impacted. And the thing about something like the Equifax breach is um, people's social security numbers and their birthdays were leaked, and somebody could use that information to steal your identity tomorrow. They could also use it five years or 10 years from now. So there will never be a moment where you can say, problem solved, uh, it turned out it wasn't as dangerous as it could be. It will impact people forever. And we won't even know whether it was the Equifax breach or another one that caused problems. Absolutely. Most so, of us will deal with identity theft at some point in our lives. Yeah, well, that's a terrifying fact. So what is the takeaway or lesson both consumers and companies can learn from all these software bugs of 2017? And what, if anything, can be done to protect against similar things in 2018? Well, the big story is that in the old days, you know, we just ran software on our PCs, and today we have software on our PC, our phones, um, devices in our house like an Amazon Echo or a Google Home. Um, we're also reliant on the companies we do business with, 
who have servers we have no control over. And so the more our entire world is imbued with software, the bigger problems there are. And um, I think over time, some of this will be solvable because companies will be able to patch things on their end or push out patches and they, they won't have to depend on us knowing about the problems. Um, but this is not going to get any easier uh, because we're going to depend on software more and more. And a lot, in a lot of cases, we won't even be aware that software is out there. But it is, and software is only as reliable as the humans who program it. And humans will always be fallible. Unfortunately, that is very true. <laughs> Harry McCracken, thank you. Thank you.